So in this second video, I just want to go over the RF exciter portion of the PDM rig. You guys thought I was going to do the modulator first. Well, no, I'm going to do the RF uh, driver section first. The idea here is we have to uh, produce some RF that's large enough to turn the final MOSFET on and off and hopefully develop a class E type output at a few watts. So I could have gone a lot of different directions with the with the driver circuit. You remember in the original circuit it was all bipolar, a simple crystal oscillator uh, uh, driving the final. Uh, we certainly could have gone that direction. So there are many different ways to uh, make a signal that's large enough to drive a MOSFET so that we can get good switching action. And uh, of course the original schematic which we're looking at here they simply use a bipolar oscillator which is a, a sine wave oscillator really and they're running that into a complementary symmetry pair that's acting as kind of a totem pole type drive system that will give you a quasi square wave uh, which should drive the MOSFET. I wanted to do something a little more updated than that. Uh, certainly you can use uh, bipolar transistors, but I wanted to try to use some uh, CMOS logic chips and uh, perhaps uh, you're familiar with using uh, a 7404 inverter as a oscillator on frequency and then using the rest of the gates as kind of a buffer or driver. Uh, that certainly works. Um, if you have a crystal that's twice the frequency, you can use a flip-flop to divide it in half. That's what I've done with this little exciter driver here. We've got a crystal that's double the frequency. We're dividing it in half with the flip-flop and then uh, driving uh, a, a MOSFET or two uh, to complete the driver. Nice little system. This could be a nice little QRP transmitter say three watts with nothing but a flip-flop and a couple transistors. Um, I was able to find a 31 megahertz TCXO, just surplus, you know, a couple bucks for this, and I've divided it down by eight to get into the 80 meter band here. So it took two flip-flops to do that. So we'll go through these circuits. Again, this is the driver portion we're working on in this video. Uh, getting a signal large enough to be able to drive the Class E final that we're going to have uh, what, uh, once we have the modulator done in the next video. Uh, all of it will go on this board and then off board with the heat sink we'll have the actual Class E final stage and the modulator stage on the heat sink. So the whole thing will consist of this board and a heat sink with a couple transistors. So let's take a look at this ingenious circuit from uh, LU1AGP. Um, he, he's using an inverter chip up front for the, for the crystal. And he's got a little switch where he can go from VFO to uh, crystal control using the rest of the chip as the uh, buffer going into the, the two uh, complementary symmetry transistors that are really just uh, very fast followers. In, in, uh, in the totem pole configuration driving the MOSFET for a single-ended drive output. Then he puts it into a big power amplifier down here, but you could certainly do something like this with bipolar transistors. Makes an excellent driver. And uh, this is actually a 40 meter implementation. So yes, you certainly can use bipolar transistors. No doubt about it. And you can build it all, build it all discrete. He's using a 4049 CMOS inverter chip that allows him to use the full 12 volts without worrying about these TTL voltages. People are saying, well, why don't you just buy one of those driver chips? You know, they only cost 14 bucks each. Get some of those proper uh, MOSFET driver chips. Well, remember, I wanted to use simple uh, circuitry and... Uh, I got uh, <laughs> hold of a 31 megahertz 
uh, temperature controlled uh, crystal oscillator and I've simply taken a couple of uh, flip-flops and I've divided it by 8 and produced a frequency of 3875 kilohertz which is kind of a known AM frequency it's not uh, 3885 but I figured this was uh, far enough away from that that I wouldn't be causing too much interference and it's an acceptable frequency in the uh, 75 meter band. So as you can see uh, the Q output of the uh, third divider stage is uh, going into the gate of the MOSFET transistor. Almost any type of MOSFET that has a reasonable input capacitance uh, perhaps under 300 picofarads is able to be driven right off the Q or the Q naught of the uh, of the flip-flop and uh, if you have trouble uh, go ahead and uh, put a few sections of uh, 7404 type inverter gates in parallel and you'll be able to drive that MOSFET no problems. You notice the 0.01 capacitor is a speed up capacitor on the gate. That's a trick for getting the MOSFET to turn on very quickly and making the square wave look very pretty. Now, because we have to have isolation from the modulator, I will be using a transformer feed, just as I used in the original circuit. And I just did a uh, bifiler, one-to-one -one transformer, the most simple type of uh, transmission line transformer you can make. Just twisted up some wires, put about 12 turns on a, uh, uh, a ferrite core, type 43 material, and uh, they're isolated from the uh, drain circuit to the output. This is what's going to feed the final. The final hopefully will be able to be in class E and putting out substantial power. But uh, even this guy alone uh, is probably capable of a half watt to possibly a watt output power. It's quite amazing what you can do with a switched FET even at RF frequencies. Not sure if you can see this or not, but uh, I have the output of the 74HCT74 flip-flop driving a small MOSFET. I'm using a very popular MOSFET for projects. It's the BS170. Uh, the 170 is similar to the old uh, Motorola 2N7000 MOSFET and it's similar to the VN2222. I'm using that MOSFET to drive the final. So it's coming off uh, the Q output of the flip-flop and uh, going into this little MOSFET and uh, in the uh, drain of this MOSFET I have a simple bifiler coil it's a bifiler wound coil. Uh, one side goes from the drain to B plus and the other side is the output to that 47 ohm resistor. It's representing the final amplifier's gate. So this is the driver stage for the final MOSFET uh, when we do our, our power amplifier. Now I have 15 volts on the collector of that little MOSFET. Now when you when you have a coil in the drain of the MOSFET you get a doubling effect. So I expect to get about 30 volts peak to peak out of the MOSFET even though I'm only using a power supply of 15 volts. And remember on the gate of that little MOSFET we have uh, TTL logic or 5 volts. So we have a 5 volt square wave going into the little MOSFET and we should get a 30 volt square wave coming out of the MOSFET. And uh, we can just simply turn the voltage down and that's kind, kind of like a drive control if you can think of it that way. So let's go over to the scope here so we can see what we're doing. 
And now I'm going to turn it on. And I'm on the 10 volt scale. So each one of these is 10 volts. One, two, three. Yeah, just about 30 volts. Uh, peak to peak. Really simple driver for a MOSFET. It gives you the ability to adjust the drive simply through the drain voltage. I don't think you can get much simpler than that. Now if you want to get fancy, you could use two MOSFETs, one off the Q output, one off the Q nut output, and you could do a very nice Class D uh, push-pull style amplifier. Um, now we need that isolation of the of the transformer and I'm calling it a pulse transformer. We need that isolation because remember our entire um, RF power amplifier is in series with the modulator and it's going to be high side. It's going to be on the high side. So with the RF floating up above we can't just directly uh, connect to the output to the final um, because it's actually floating above the modulator and we'll go through that later and see how we can do that but in this case I have the modulator reference to ground and I have the power amplifier uh, reference to B plus so they split the voltage between them so if we run this whole thing say on 30 volts there will be 15 volts devoted to the modulator and 15 volts devoted to the power amplifier, the RF power amplifier. It's an interesting hookup. But if you do that, somebody's got to get isolated because you can't have two ground reference systems um, unless you do some very fancy level shifting. And I'm doing it the lazy way using an isolation component. In this case, a transformer. So I have dressed down the circuit. I've added a uh, 1K resistor from the gate to ground. And I've put a 1 ohm resistor in the source. Uh, you notice the square wave is turning on faster than it's turning off. That's characteristic of a single-ended type of driver. A uh, complementary symmetry or a push-pull driver would give sharper edges, of course. But we're going to see if we can get away with this. I know I'm putting out power because when I put my finger on the load resistor I've got down here, the 47 ohm, it's, uh, it's more than the half-watt rating on the resistor. So I would assume I'm over about a watt uh, into a 47 ohm load. So that should be plenty of uh, drive. Again, we can adjust the amount of drive with the voltage on the, uh, on the FET. It's very easy to adjust the drive that way. Right. So I couldn't quite let it go. The push-pull off the Q and Q knot is just too tempting to try with a pair of uh, BS-170. So I actually was able to get, um, oh, I would say... 10 turns of tri-filer wire. I was able to get 10 turns of tri-filer wire onto the uh, Type 43 toroid. And uh, remember, we're building a pulse transformer. And a pulse transformer is for passing square waves. And we know that square waves are made up of odd harmonics. And you would like to go out to at least the third or fifth harmonic in order to get those nice sharp edges that we're looking for for the Class E stage. Remember we're building a very uh, a very good square wave type driver for our Class E final that we're going to be putting outboard. So let's see if we can get uh, a nice looking push-pull style uh, drive signal using this tri-filer wound. Now we're going to take two of the leads and put, in, put them together to form a center tap and then uh, one of the windings is completely isolated and that's our secondary. So we have six leads to deal with and uh, two are going to be twisted together and uh, two are going to be the output and then the outside of the center tap go to the transistors.
So I've got a cute little circuit here. This is just using one of the dual flip-flops, the 74HCT74, along with a 14 megahertz crystal and divided in two. That gives you 7 megahertz. But in this case, I found an 8 meg rock, and I'm going to divide that in half down to 4 megs uh, for this uh, 75 meter experiment. Now the reason I'm, I'm making this is, uh, you know, this is for people that have maybe a, a, a 2x crystal, something in the 40 meter band, and they want to uh, divide it in half down to uh, 75 meters. Nice little circuit. And again, it gives you the Q and the Q naught output. So I figured I could take those two outputs and test the idea of using a pair of uh, BS uh, 170s and going into a center tapped coil and uh, trying for a, uh, a push-pull class D driver which I think will give us sharper edges and uh, a more even up and down type drive to the uh, to the final MOSFET. Plus I wanted to try building on this other type of circuit board where you're actually building through a ground plane and boy, it was much easier using this circuit card material rather than that original material. So let's see what the waveform looks like just on the flip-flops output. Okay, for those of you who are worried about the 8 meg rock, as you can see, dividing it in half and playing with the little trimmer, I've got it just inside the band for legal reasons. But we're not really concerned about that for this test circuit. Wow, that's a pretty nice looking square wave. Coming out at 3.999 megahertz. We're going to send that into a pair of uh, BS-170s. And we'll see what happens at the output of that uh, center tapped transmission line transformer. So we now have the flip-flop Q and Q naught outputs attached directly to the BS-170 MOSFETs. No resistors, straight off to the gates. Nothing fancy here. I didn't do a cap coupling. I didn't do a resistor to ground. I didn't do a series resistor or a speed-up cap. It's just direct connection right to the flip-flop. The Q and the q naught outputs direct into the FETs. And uh, I've got 10 volts that I'm going to put on this thing. Uh, the sources are grounded. So uh, no, no uh, source resistors. The only thing you've got limiting the current is the wire on the coil, the center tap transformer. So let's take a peek and see what it looks like on the scope with 10 volts on the drains. So we've got a nice looking square wave. It's definitely overshooting on the make and the break, so it's nice and balanced. 20 volts peak to peak with 10 volts on the, on the drain. Uh, it's an excellent driver. This should be a fantastic driver. So with 10 volts on the drains, push-pull, we get 20 volts output. It's doing exactly what it should be doing. So it's been running for a minute. Let me touch that 47 ohm half watt. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. That is hot. So yeah, it's 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 probably a watt at least this thing's putting out at 10 volts. So could you make a class D 2 watt or 3 watt type output? A transmitter with this simple hookup of a single flip-flop and a couple of transistors. If you put 13.8 volts on this thing, I assure you, if you put the proper network on the output, you'd probably be able to put out 3 watts, no problem. So, looking at the circuit, some of you are saying, Mike, that's just way too complex for where I like to uh, be with uh, electronics. And... Uh, Building on that circuit board, that doesn't look too easy. You've had to make connections on the back. And uh, I can say I agree with you. 
I would much rather build on circuit board that has a built-in ground plane that you're going through and of course I, I prefer to do dead bug and Manhattan style construction on boards like this for RF but because I was using digital electronics these uh, flip-flops and the TCXO it just was more convenient to use a perf board style of construction so we're getting through it this is the RF section and down here is going to be the modulator again this is the driver the final amplifier and the modulator are both going to be off board because they need to be heat sunk but the exciter portion goes on this small board